insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment. This is episode 79. Queen, Halloween, and Haunted Mansion's return to the silver screen. Woo! I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my vibrant and energetic co-host, Michelle Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, dear? I'm doing okay. How are you? Are you vibrant and energetic as I've described you? Shh. Yeah. Because the theme for the past couple of episodes has been you falling asleep. <laughs> Well, we did have lunch, but we had a you know a couple of hours ago. We're, so yeah, we're a little bit we, later in the afternoon than normal, right? So I had time to digest and relax. So See, maybe we that's... should do. I should do a major system upgrade at work more often, <laughs> which has been tying me up most of the time. Right, so. right. So yeah, I guess feeling you know. You seem much more chipper, which well, is good. Thank you. Um, before we get started, um, I want to invite everyone to make sure you listen to our. Uh, audio podcast as insights inter- and into entertainment or watch the videos that we post for all of our podcasts as insights into things you can get them on uh, apple podcast spotify any place you get your your podcast normally we do uh, stream six days a week on twitch except for this week when we were getting utility work done and had no power one of those <laughs> days Small, you know, small minor thing, (laughs) you know, you needed power. Let me tell you, the house has never been so quiet. (laughs) We have a very noisy house when we have electricity. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing how you you don't realize how loud the house is until you don't have anything on. You're like, wow, this is is quiet. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, so. You can also catch uh, high-res versions of our uh, videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things, or you can get links to all of our podcast sources, shows, everything on our website at insightsintothings.com. So today's episode, now that you wrote up notes for me so I don't scroll, (laughs) maybe I won't mess up the segment names now. Right. (laughs) So in our Disney detective, it looks like Halloween's coming to the Magic Kingdom next month. That's uh, a, a welcome return to some normalcy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Disneyland is extending its cast member furloughs, but there may be some hope for reopening. Mm. Not much hope, apparently, but some. Yeah, it kind of kind of <laughs> changed. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> quickly. <laughs> that's a that's a quickly developing story there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in our tales from the edge of the galaxy. Uh, Mandalorian, the Mandalorian star hints at Moff Gideon's dark saber battles in season two. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> uh, also Imagineer, uh, Scott Trowbridge drops exciting Galaxy's Edge news, which we probably should mention, uh, the news that we got from Madison as well in the game she plays. Oh, yeah, yeah, so definitely. We'll, we'll talk about that when we get there mm-hmm. as well. In our, uh, blah, in our entertainment news, so you can write this stuff down and I still can't read it. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I try. In our entertainment news, uh, Queen and Adam Lambert have a new CD slash DVD coming this fall and a new Haunted Mansion movie might be in the works. I'm not excited at all. How interesting <laughs> is that? <laughs> so. We'll finish up with our insightful picks of the week, which are a couple of good ones. And one is a Star Wars related one, it looks like, from their website. Our insightful pick? Your insightful pick. It's not Star Wars. It's not, but it has someone who should have been Star Wars. Oh, right. There's a Star Wars connection. Okay, I'm like, 
things. There's so a Star Wars Star connection. Wars in it. So we'll. I we want to be a pilot. <laughs> we will, no spoiler. Don't steal my thunder. <laughs> Sorry, it was just too easy. We will get to that momentarily. In the meantime, we'll be right back. Go for Disney Detectives. So normally this time of year, many people would be planning to attend the Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party. Um, but obviously months ago, they had announced that they weren't going uh, to be having the party because of, you know, obviously the, the crowd control. Um, you know, there's a parade, there's fireworks. Um, so it kind of seemed like there weren't going to be any fall festivities, but it seems Disney actually announced that they were going to be having some Halloween happenings throughout the Magic Kingdom this fall. Um, and uh, one of the other things that they haven't allowed uh, during uh, any other time is costumes for adults to wear. So normally during regular operating you know, uh, uh, hours, I guess, during the park, adults were never allowed to wear Halloween costumes unless they were attending the Halloween party. Well, this year, because they're not doing holiday parties, they kind of changed the rules. So from October, uh, I'm sorry, from September 15th to October 31st, guests of all ages can wear Halloween costumes during the regular park hours. Um, so again, this is a, a first since they uh, instituted the the rule a couple of years ago, saying that only uh, children could wear costumes throughout a normal day. Um, so also, they will be doing a special Halloween-themed cavalcade with Mickey, Minnie, Pluto, and Pals wearing their favorite Halloween costumes. Now, this is something that they started doing once they opened the park back up because they're not doing parades, but they're doing these cute little cavalcades where they have trolleys and other uh, vehicles uh, that go up and down Main Street. So kind of like a mini parade, I guess you could say. Um and from what a couple of people have said, they actually kind of prefer that because you don't have to sit there for, you know, an hour beforehand to get a good spot. Um, you know, they're, they don't last very long. They're just a few minutes long and you get to see the characters and the characters wave and you get your picture, you know, you get your, your nice pictures and stuff and then you go about your, you know, your day. Um, so they'll be doing a Halloween themed one. Um, and then uh, some other characters will probably be dressed up in their Halloween costume. Now we've done the Halloween party a couple of times. And what's always nice is you get to see some of the characters that you don't normally get to see during a regular visit. They kind of come out just for Halloween. So maybe some of these characters will come out. Uh, plus, you get to see them in their Halloween costume, too. So I think that's a, a nice change um, as well. Um, obviously, during the fall season, special treats get to come out as well. So they do different um, Halloween-themed uh, pastries and drinks and things like that. And one of the things that's really cool, and I'm sure it's going to be on eBay... <laughs> <laughs> in a couple of weeks when it comes out is there is going to be a Madame Leota sipper that will be coming out. And what was funny was another Disney website, uh, fan website. They actually happened to be in the magic kingdom when they were doing a photo shoot of the food. So they had um, the monster mash burger and they had the one cupcake and they had this um, poor unfortunate souls drink that looks like Ursula because it's like purple and, and blue. And they had the sipper and it's Madame Leota, you know, in her ball and, you know, it, it's a sipper. So got to look for that on eBay since Very we're not, cool. <laughs> since we're not going down to, to Disney anytime soon. So it's nice to, to see that Halloween is coming. There's going to be the Halloween decorations. Um, that's one of the things that, you know, we always enjoyed. They always do a fantastic and yeah, they, they do a fantastic job with the de decorations. Mm -hmm. 
but they miraculously transformed the park. Oh. I mean, there was the one time we were down there yeah. for the Halloween party. Mm-hmm. Then we went back to the park the next day, mm-hmm. and it was Christmas. Right. And it's just incredible the work that they yeah, do. Yeah, it, it's amazing, you know, the and and you, they have videos. You can, you know, find them on YouTube where they they show you yeah, the how they go. And stuff, you, know. you know, it was like it's like the park closes on the thirty first and bam, you know, by the next morning it's it's Christmas and they do it with the resorts as well yeah. and it, it's amazing well, how, and how that they was do one that. of the things that we had learned last year was mm-hmm. that there's an entire seasonal department. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like yeah. there's literally a company within Disney mm-hmm. that this is that all just they do. And what was really kind of funny that we even got to to witness as well because we we're down in, in Disney during Christmas last year. Um, and then on our way, we, we did, uh, Walt Disney World for a couple of days. Then we were in Vero Beach and they have their decoration. And then we did, um, Hilton Head on our way home. And what was funny was when we parked at Hilton Head, we actually parked in front of, um, the uh what what would you call them um for like luggage racks yeah like luggage have. racks that had the directions for where their holiday decorations go because that was one of the other things that we found out in watching one of the behind the scenes disney things where we learned about this seasonal right uh department that they do everything from the the parks to Every resort. Every resort around so the world, it's yeah. kind of funny because you think, okay, the, <laughs> like it made its way all the way to, you know, Hilton Head, yeah, yeah. you know, and it's like, yeah. all right, this is, this is kind of cool. So for the, for the Halloween cavalcade, do you think we're going to see the ride of the Headless Horseman? I don't know. That might be kind of. Because that was always one of the that, highlights. Yeah, that was parade. always one of the highlights of the the Halloween parade, and you only got to see him if you went to the Halloween party. So that, because they have done, you know, just like you know, unfortunately, she she ended up having there was an incident with her when Merida was on her horse, kind of going down, uh, in a in a little cavalcade. Um, so I could see, you know, just. You know, play some eerie music and maybe he ends the night or, or yeah. something where well, he and just, that's the thing. Like he's yeah. not part of the parade. No, he kind of starts it he off. He comes out before the parade. Right. And sort of gets the crowd riled. Right, out. right. It'll be interesting to, to see. Well, we'll know more because it, you know, it's the fifth, uh, September 15th is when they start, you know, all their little That'd festivities. Cool. So that, that would be cool if that they do that. Cool. So if you're down there, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, please write into us. Comments at insights into entertainment.com. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, so now we're going to talk about the unfortunate furlough that Disney employees are facing. Yeah. So obviously there are still furloughs in, in, in Florida because obviously not everything is opened a hundred percent, but obviously out on the West Coast, things are even more uh, closed up. Um, so while Disney theme parks are, you know, opening up around the world, obviously the only one that still hasn't opened is the parks that are in California. Um, Disney cast member, Disneyland cast members actually recently received an email from the company regarding the situation, which really doesn't say a whole lot. It basically made it clear that as of right now, they don't know when things are going to be opening back up. Um, several cast members took to social media to, to mention it. And, you know, basically it said, you, you know, the only thing that it, it, it really said was that the furlough could last, you know, up to six months, which would hit mid September. Um, but just yesterday, there was actually word that came out from the governor where they issued this whole new color coded system, um, for helping it, helping to reopen different sectors of the state. Um, and, and basically from what it, it talked about, it would take three weeks to go from one stage to the other. So you have purple, you have red, you have orange and yellow. 
And to be able to move from one to the other, you have to be three weeks at a certain level. So really, if you take that into account, it almost looks like Disney is not even going to be opening for the rest of this year. Wow. Um, if if you kind of, Disneyland. you know, Disneyland, I'm sorry, Disneyland. Um, so, it, you know, it, it does look kind of grim for the rest of you know this year for them um you know right now the only thing in disneyland that's open is disney springs um california actually has a a separate website where you can actually go and put the county and it'll tell you what color code they're in and it lists every type of business and it'll list you know whether or not it can be open for outdoor um you know limited hours or not at all and when you go to orange county which is where uh anaheim is located they're still in purple they still have too many uh positive cases per day so they're they're not opening um so let's let's talk for a minute about the furlough itself Mm mm-hmm so are these unpaid furloughs or are they paid furloughs? It doesn't say. I'm guessing they're probably at this point unpaid because we know when they first started, everything said that they were going to be paid up until I think it was like, what, the end of April? I believe so. Yeah. Um, And then after that, I'm guessing everybody's now on some sort of unemployment. Um, so so was, I'm assuming Disney's not covering medical insurance at this point i don't know it doesn't the article really didn't say anything regarding you know what the cast member you know benefits were at this point just that you know it was still extending now um some parks uh like knott's berry farms has actually opened but only for in park dining events so basically they're just doing kind of like a food and wine thing um no rides are open. It's basically just come and walk around the park and and Which, eat. To be honest with you, I wouldn't mind doing that if it was reasonably priced. At yeah, yeah, that that I could totally do. Um, and then SeaWorld also opened as a zoo, which is kind of interesting um, and doing outdoor dining and again, but no rides. So Disney technically could do the same you know, allow people to, to walk and do dining. They just haven't, um, you know, decided to do that. But as of right now, no place can have, you know, ride. So. So has there been any news of the furloughs becoming layoffs or are these in addition to layoffs that they've done? Nothing. I haven't heard anything. And for, uh, the Disney cast members who I'm, I'm friends with on, on Facebook that are, you know, in the Florida region, nobody's really said they just kind of, you know, we miss working there. We hope to get back sometime soon. You know, now, nobody's any idea of what the numbers are, the number of people that are currently. On no, I, I haven't seen, you know, because I'm pretty sure in numbers. Florida, Disney's the single largest employer. Right. We do know that Disney's the, the thing is lar- the, the largest employer, but I don't know if there have been any numbers as to how many people have okay. have come back yet because we know not all of the resorts are open. You have certain resorts that are open for the NBA players. Um, but how many, you know, how many cast members are there yeah. during that time? Because obviously they don't need to be 100% staffed if only certain areas of the hotel are, are being occupied. So not really sure. I haven't really seen too many numbers as yeah. of right now. It's, it's tough. I mean, mm-hmm. it's, yeah. we're talking specifically about the hospitality industry here in mm-hmm. Disney. But, you know, this is the case around the country, around mm-hmm. the world, really. Yeah, yeah where a lot of people are impacted by and we've been very fortunate that that we've not seen these types of issues i mean you've been working from home Mm -hmm. Uh, i've been going into the office but we've been fortunate enough to be in industries where we haven't had that that impact i i really feel for the people that are well my company did do furloughs when when things started because one of our factories within the united states had to shut down um and they did finally open up but during that there were people from my company that that were actually eventually let go um so fortunately you know i i wasn't one of them but 
it's obviously it's an impact on you know the the whole country really so yeah. well hopefully there is light at the end of the tunnel mm-hmm. and hopefully it's not a train <laughs> So I think that was all we had for uh, Disney Detective. Mm -hmm. Uh, We'll take a quick break and we'll come back with Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Go for Disney, uh, for Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy. It wouldn't be a week go by if I didn't <laughs> screw it up, right? True. That is true. So fans will be seeing a lot more of Juan Carlos es- uh, Esposito in season two of The Mandalorian. In the season one finale, his character, Moff Gideon, emerged from a crashed ship with the black bladed saber let me stop you just a second there what's the man's first name juan carlos giancarlo giancarlo Giancarlo. Giancarlo. (laughs) i'll screw up the intro you screw up the names (laughs) thanks anyway please go ahead Mm mm-hmm Anyway, so according to Esposito, uh, fans will find Moff Gideon using a lot more of that Darksaber in the upcoming season. Um, He's known for uh, his roles on Once Upon a Time and Breaking Bad. And in a recent interview, uh, he revealed how honored he felt to actually join the Star Wars franchise. Uh, He said, first, I have to be... I have to get beyond the excitement of being in such an iconic piece of material. Star Wars is iconic, and I would have liked to have been in a Star Wars... And he said, would I have liked to have been in a Star Wars movie as opposed to the Mandalorian television show? He goes, I think I made this significant, the significantly correct choice. Um, he goes on uh, then to talk about... That, you know, for for Star Wars, it's, you know, the grandeur of it all um, and that the mythology and the storing telly telling aspect of um, the franchise is what, you know, really appealed to him. Uh, he said that John Favreau, in his great visionary way, has educated himself and partnered with Dave Filoni. So the mythology uh, that was so connected to George Lucas, uh, for me, it's an empower, uh, an empowering movement, uh, uh, sorry, mo- moment, uh, first to get, you know, beyond the franchise and then to realize that he was going to have his own lightsaber. Um, so the storyline for season two is still a mystery, but will obviously focus, you know, on the quest of, everybody trying to acquire the child we pretty much know that's where you know most of it is going since that's what was hinted at you know for for obviously a good portion of you know season one um he said that you know he actually does his own stunts um that even with all of the technology that they have you know, there's still a little bit of stunt work that that gets in. And what was funny was when they would give him, you know, a lightsaber, he said sometimes it would actually be the full saber. Sometimes it would just be the hilt. And he'd have to kind of imagine that there was something, you know, at the end of it. And then, um, you know, he he got a little too good to it, where the prop guys would kind of come to him and say, okay, this is the last prop one so be really careful with it because he 
kind of broke a, a few with, you know, because you want to be rough, but you don't want to be too rough where you you break the the lightsaber. So, yeah, I have the same problem with with my lightsabers where <laughs> I like to fight with my lightsabers with our uh-huh. daughter, and I still have bruised knuckles. I think uh-huh. from the last time we did it. Yeah, you guys haven't done that in a while because it hurts. <laughs> She doesn't hold back. No, she doesn't. It's how she gets out her aggression. Well, I'd prefer she get it out on someone besides my knuckle. Yeah, well. But anyway, this is this is cool because we already know that we have Ahsoka Tano is mm-hmm. confirmed for this season. Right, right. And uh, anyone who's watched her in the animated series knows uh, she's a very animated fighter. She's like a a slightly slower version of Yoda mm. fighting. And everyone knows what Yoda looks like from when he fights Clone yeah. Wars and Revenge of the Sith. Mm-hmm. And she fights with two. Mm-hmm. And um, so I suspect we're probably going to see some lightsaber battles between the two of them. Mm-hmm. And it should be interesting. I yeah. don't think we're going to see him fighting baby Yoda anytime soon. Mm, I don't know. Baby Yoda. They'll just choke him. He's, he's already proven his ability to force That is joke, true. So. That is true. Throat hugs for everyone. <laughs> throat, free throat hugs for all. <laughs> so we also have some Galaxy's Edge news. Tell us about that. So here's his, his title. Walt Disney Imagineering Portfolio Creative Executive. You got that? That must take up a lot of room on a business card. He's got a big business card. <laughs> he sure does. Uh, Scott Tobridge is the force behind Star Wars Galaxy's Edge lands at both Walt Disney World in Florida and Disneyland in California. He was involved in basically every aspect of the creation of Galaxy's Edge, from the 100-foot-long scale replica of the Millennium Falcon to the most minute details like the hand-painted rock formations on the walls surrounding Dock Bay 7 food and cargo. Um, so if you're heading to Batu in the near future, here's stuff that you ha- uh, here's some stuff to look forward to. So uh, the first is that they are publishing some initiatives um, which they're going which they're hoping will h- help to expand uh, the experience making Black Spire outposts even more meaningful for visitors who take the time to read the various texts. Uh, he had the opportunity to announce that Star Wars Galaxy's Ed Trading Post collection will include a special target edition of Star Wars myth and myths and fables. Uh, the book includes special um includes fairy tales, myths, and legends that have been passed down through the generations in the world of Star Wars. Um, so Target and, and Star Wars have, have teamed up. So there's going to be these uh, uh, a special collection of, of items that you'll be able to get at Target. So some of them are books, some of them are toys. Um, so one of the other books that's going to be coming out is uh, George Mann's da- uh, Star Wars Dark Legends that will be available at the trading post. Um, so both of these books will feature custom covers, three brand new Batuvian stories that have never been shared with the Star Wars fandom. Um, there's also going to be a kids book that is going to be uh, coming out called Il- uh, Ellie and Me, and it's a kid story about two creatures who live at on Batu in Black Spire Outpost. Um, and what he shared was that these two characters were, were kind of the first two that they conceived of when they were thinking about Batu and they just fell in love with them and decided to, to kind of keep them around. And now they made this kid's story, um, about them. And then he was obviously very excited to talk about the Galactic Star Cruiser Hotel. He said, whereas Galaxy's Edge might be a great way to spend a couple of hours in the world of Star Wars, our Galactic Star Cruiser gives people a chance to spend a couple of days in the world of Star Wars aboard the glamorous Star Cruiser, which we've talked about before um, and you know, have no idea what the cost of it would be, but sounds like something eventually we would probably want to do, I'm sure. Without a doubt. (laughs) 
Um, and then, um, so obviously they're going to be doing, um, you know, different toys, as I mentioned, uh, as well. Um, now everything is supposed to either be online or in stores, um, this weekend, actually. When I had looked up yesterday, they actually didn't have, um, anything available yet. Um, it was actually all on, on back order. Uh, it looked like they had pre-orders for certain things. It was actually a Darth Vader that it looked like they had done pre-orders and it was already sold out. Um, so we'll have to, to look to see if, if there's anything, you know, else. Um, you know, so basically, you know, he shared that they're, you know, that they're looking to extend the world of Galaxy's Edge into people's homes in, in various, uh, mediums, including books and merchandise, you know, and video games. And one of the things that we found out from our daughter who plays The Sims is she, uh, told us the other day that, um, there was going to be a Star Wars game pack that she could uh, get, which was going to include, I guess, costumes and accessories. Um, so this is, you know, another thing from Disney. That <laughs> you're throwing me off, man. I know, I know. <laughs> um, you know, and one of the other things that they were talking about was that... Um, with uh, Black Spire Outpost, uh, the one uh, shop that they had, they actually had a bunch of items from um, the Mandalorian that were there as um, pieces in decorations that at the time when Galaxy's Edge opened, Nobody knew what these pieces were. They were basically Easter eggs. And then once the season had started for The Mandalorian, everybody started recognizing these different things. So, while we're on the subject... (laughs) Hi. Madison is here. So, Madison, we were just talking briefly about The Sims 4... uh, Was it Activity Pack or Expansion Pack for Star Um, Wars? It's a Game Pack. So tell us about what's in the game pack. Um, well, I was able to see the trailer on YouTube, and it looked sort of like, um, there would be a new world that looked a lot like Galaxy's Edge when we first went there. So it's like Batu. Yeah, like... Like Black Spire Outpost. Pretty much. It's basically Batu. Um, they actually, um, even had the name, um, in the trailer. Um, and... Um, I actually noticed a lot of the stuff, like the marketplace looks very similar. There was even the monster that had popped up. Oh, that's cool. Um, And I had learned a bit more about the whole game pack. Like, there's skills that you can get in The Sims, like the handiness and charisma skill. And apparently there's a new lightsaber skill that you can get, which is kind of funny. So when is it? I think it comes out September... 12th or September 18th, something like that is the release for it? Yeah, it's supposed to come out in a couple of weeks. Um, it's supposed to, um, at least that's what I've heard from. It's supposed to come out in, um, a few weeks. Are we getting that? (laughs) Duh. (laughs) (laughs) Or Daddy's gonna start playing Sims just so that he can have a Star Wars I, I, I'm gonna have to. I was (laughs) was having trouble with Sims 4. Ah, see? Now. So, very cool. Well, thank you for your expert insights, sweetheart. No problem. Uh, and I think that was all we had for uh, Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy. That is it. And we'll be back uh, after a quick break with our entertainment news. Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Talking to real teens about real teen problems. Explore issues from braces to puberty, social anxiety to financial responsibility. Each week, we talk about the topics concerning today's youth. We 
look at how the issues affect teens, how to cope with these issues, and how parents, friends, and loved ones can help teens handle these challenges. Check out our video episodes on youtube.com backslash insights into things. Catch our audio versions on podcast.insightsintoteens.com or on the web at insightsintothings.com. Go for entertainment news. <laughs> so after having performed all over the world to close to 4 million diehard fans, Queen and Adam Lambert are bringing the spectacle and excitement of their live performances closer to home with their first ever live album release, Queen and Adam Lambert Live uh, uh, Live Around the World. The new CD and DVD set uh, presents a compilation of concert highlights captured the world over personally selected by Brian May, Roger Taylor, and Adam Lambert from over 200 shows that they have performed over the years, with several tracks exclusively available for the first time. Uh, Queen and Adam Lambert live around the world will also include their full live aid set performance from Fireflight in Australia. And that is supposed to be coming out October 2nd. That sounds cool. Cause yeah, I think we're, we both love queen and we both think Adam Lambert's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we'd love to get tickets to see him in concert, but I don't that know was, if that's happening anytime soon. Yeah. That was one of the concerts. We kind of kicked ourselves when it did come to the Philly area that we didn't go to see, you know, after the fact we were like, Oh, why didn't we go? That would have been like such an amazing yeah. concert. So this might be the, the next best thing. Definitely got to get the DVD. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's figure, turn the off the lights, put on concert shirts and, you know, get beer poured all over us. Get, and, no, we can, we can no, avoid the we, beer. Yeah, that's true. We don't need, the beer. We don't need that. <laughs> So anyway, very cool story. Mm -hmm. Hopefully uh, we'll get that when it comes out. Yeah. That'll be another movie night for us. Yes, it will. So there was this other story that we threw in here that's really, <laughs> I don't know how important it is or anything, but something about a haunted mansion. Now I will raise the safety bar and a ghost will follow you home. <laughs> you know we're going to get a takedown notice now because of that. Yeah, well. So tell us about this new Haunted Mansion movie that's so, allegedly coming. So this was very exciting news for, for me. So Disney is conjuring up a new Haunted Mansion live action movie based on the 51-year-old Disneyland theme park ride. Um, and it seems that Ghostbusters writer... Uh, Katie uh, DePaul is attached. Um, the producers are Dan Lynn and Jonathan uh, Einhart, uh, Einrich. Um, and uh, the, the production company is Rideback, um, where these are the, uh, the producers that actually worked on um, Disney's live action of Aladdin last year. Um, and they've also done work on the Sherlock Holmes franchises, It and the Lego movies. Uh, so they have some, some good movies uh, under their belt. Um, so if you don't know, the Haunted Mansion opened in Disneyland in 1969 and was an immediate success. Um, obviously, it spawned rides at Walt Disney World and Tokyo Disneyland, um, you know, and patrons go in a doom buggy, which is what you know this is if you've never been on on the ride they're um, bigger than that on the ride though. yeah because you know two to three people can can fit in it um so disney actually used the ride as an inspiration for the 2003 horror comedy the haunted mansion which starred eddie murphy portraying a workaholic realtor who buys a mansion and it turns out to be a haunted one um the movie was directed uh by Rob uh, Minkoff, and it grossed $182 million worldwide with a $90 million budget. So didn't really do so well. Um, but obviously, Disney has seen major success um, with different um, 
theme ride crossovers like Pirates of the Caribbean, um, which that ride opened in 1967 and then came to the screen also in 2003. And there have been five pirate movies that have grossed 1.5 billion domestically and 3.7 billion internationally. So some, some Disney movies do well. And obviously some like the country bears <laughs> from 2002 don't always do so well. Um, Another movie uh, based off of a Disneyland attraction, uh, The Jungle Cruise, which we talked about, that was actually supposed to be opening July of this year, but now has been pushed out to July of next year at this point. Um, so we'll see, uh, you know, how well uh, that does. Um, so not much about the the storyline or what it, it's basically this kind of popped up yesterday and all the different news sources, you know, we're talking about it, you know, so no um, if it's going to be a comedy because uh, uh, the the writer, she did uh, she worked on Parks and Recreation. Uh, she did the, the comedies, uh, The Heat and Snatched. Um, so guessing it's probably going to be more comedy and, and versus, you know, more of a, the horror. Now, years ago, after the Eddie Murphy movie came out, there was supposed to be a horror version of The Haunted Mansion that got teased out and nothing ever, you know, came of it. So hopefully this one is more than just a tease and that, you know, something does actually come out of it because well, I'd be and, really happy. And the Haunted Mansion ride itself has a lot of stories mm -hmm. about it. There's, yeah. there's comics about it. There's books about mm -hmm. it. Fan stuff about it as well. You know. And there's various ghost stories that mm -hmm. go along with it. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you know, Walt Disney had his original idea of how mm -hmm. he wanted it. And there's been, you know, Rolly Crumb talks about his, uh, you know, his theories, uh, you know, of how it was supposed to be uh, as well. There's actually, uh, um, if you go to Disney Parks YouTube page, they have an interview that they did with him just recently talking about how what Walt wanted it to be, what he wanted it to be, what Mark Davis wanted it to be, and what it eventually became. Yeah. Yeah, so there's a lot to draw on, mm -hmm. certainly, to put together a very involved story. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the fact that you have different haunted mansions in every different park, which could all have their own different stories. Mm -hmm. There's a lot, there's a there's a very rich heritage from which to draw from that. Yeah. So anyway, we'll see how well it goes. We'll see yeah. what direction they go. Hopefully it uh, won't be the same direction as a 2003 one. Hey, it's not that bad of a movie. Okay. It's not that great, uh, okay, but it's okay. not... As long as you can admit it. I can admit it. Okay. Because, you know, I can bash on Star Wars when they put I out know. some stinkers. Okay. I know. All right. So that was all we had for entertainment news. We'll mm -hmm. be back real quick uh, with our insightful picks of the week. Mm-hmm. Go for your insightful pick. Uh, so my insightful pick is a television uh, series that is actually based on a book. And this is what I thought was actually fascinating was the book was actually written in 1932. And not that much was added from the book to the series to, to kind of modernize it. So that kind of blew my mind when I, I, I uh, read about that. Um, so the series is called Brave New World, and it is on NBC's streaming service, uh, Peacock. So last weekend, I believe, uh, they were running a, a free uh, preview uh, for the weekend. Um, but as it turned out, if you are a... Um, Xfinity subscriber, you actually get Peacock for free. Um, so that I wasn't sure about. So if you happen to, uh, to have Xfinity, uh, go and sign up for it. It's a free account. Um, Peacock in general has a whole lot of free things. That was one of the things when they came out, uh, they were advertising different, uh, free shows and movies and things like that. They do have some items that are premium. So unless you're a paid subscriber or, 
um, you can get your free account. Um, this happens to be one that you'd have to, uh, I think you can watch the, the first episode for free, but then if you aren't a subscriber to Peacock, then you have to, um, pay and and subscribe um so i was binging it at first (laughs) trying to get all nine episodes in last weekend and then i found out i was like oh we we get this for free oh i can slow down (laughs) so i took my time uh watching the rest uh so the show basically takes place in a utopian society where perfection hinges upon the control of monogamy and privacy and members of a collective being um, all of a sudden start questioning the rules and everything kind of goes on a collision course with forbidden love and revolution. Um, so it, it basically takes, you know, that everything is achieved, you know, peace and stability, um, you know, that everybody has their class, um, you know, everything is manufactured for them, you know, Everybody belongs to everybody else. There's no family. Um, you know, there, you know, there's a whole class society that's, you know, basically predetermined, uh, before you're born. And, but yet there's still this savage area of the world where none of that, you know, takes place. And somebody from the savage area kind of, is brought to this utopian society and he basically starts questioning everything and making people start to really think for themselves. And then of course the chaos, you know, ensues. But like I said, seeing that it was based off of a novel, you know, I started doing some research and saw that this book came out in, you know, like I said, 1932 where, the only, you know, big difference is that in the television series, uh, there's an AI aspect of, you know, what's running the utopian society, whereas in the book, they didn't have that. But still, all the other, you know, parallels that they had, um, you know, were were similar. So very interesting, you know. A little graphic at times, <clears throat> but kind of interesting because in some ways, you know, it's very current, but yet, you know, hey, here's how we could go if we, you know, let others think for ourselves. So, okay, good pick. Thank you. So, my pick this week, um, surprisingly, is another documentary. But a really cool documentary. This was a very cool documentary that you had recommended. Whoop, whoop. Uh, you had watched the first two episodes uh, without me, which wasn't very nice. But then you watched them I had to me. test it out for you. So I was pre So my pick this week <laughs> is High Score. Uh, it's a new Netflix documentary series that looks back at the early years of the video game industry. Across six episodes, key developers, artists, executives, and even players discuss the initial arcade and home console boom, the emergence of Nintendo, the rise of adventure and role-playing games, the battle between Sega and Nintendo, the success and ensuing controversy over fighting games like Mortal Kombat, and the development of 3D gameplay in Star Fox and Doom. Um, If you are... I don't know, I guess an old school gamer like me. You know, I go back when I was a kid, we had in television, we had the Atari 2600, and that's where we started out with our video gaming as kids. And I moved up to my Nintendo and my Sega and, you know, everything that came after that. So it's a real uh, interesting look at where these things came from, uh, how they evolved, why they evolved, it's an interesting look at the technology, the marketing behind it, uh, the the science to a certain degree behind it, uh, some of the phenomenon that even as a kid I wasn't aware of some of these championship tournaments and stuff like that that were done. Um, and it, it was it was educational, you know. It was it was neat seeing some of the old games like the we just watched the um, Rise of the Adventure and role playing games, and I was big into the King's Quest series, um, 
uh, the Madden games, all that stuff. And it, it was just this flood of memories that came back watching it. Um, we're, I think, four or five episodes into it at this point. So we're almost through the whole series mm-hmm. itself. Um, so I, I think it's a, it's very well done. It's very well um, scripted because they'll give you a tease at the beginning that, like, you remember that little nugget. And then they'll build the entire episode on that and come back to that in the end, and it brings the whole thing full circle. So it's very well produced. And some of the personalities that they wound up bringing in for this, I was kind of surprised that, you know, some of the, you know, the original Noah Bushnell and and all the original old school guys from Atari and stuff. So uh, High Score on Netflix, streaming now, and we'll be back. So, unfortunately, I hate closing the show on sad news, but we can't have a show this week and not mention the untimely passing of Chadwick Boseman, uh, who was suffering, much to our surprise and Mm -hmm. a lot of the public surprise, from liver cancer for the last four years. Colon cancer. Colon cancer. I'm sorry. Colon cancer. And... uh, Succumb to that on Friday. You want to tell us about the... Yeah, so um, Friday, reps for the Black Panther actor confirmed that he had passed away following a four-year battle with colon cancer. Uh, They said, It is with immeasurable grief that we confirm the passing of Chadwick Boseman. Um, Chadwick was diagnosed with stage three colon cancer back in 2016 and battled with the disease the last four years as it progressed to stage four. A true fighter, Chadwick preserved, uh, persevered uh, throughout it all and uh, brought you many of the films you have come to love so much. Um, and Josh Gad, who happened to star with him um, in back in, I believe it was 2000, I don't remember what year the, the movie was. Um, it was Thurgood, uh, based off of Thurgood Marshall. Um, he said he was breaking his Twitter silence to share some beauty. This was one of my final texts from the brilliant and once in a lifetime talent, Chadwick Boseman. Uh, he basically said, take this all in and celebrate life. Uh, he knew how precious every moment was. Tonight, the heavens received one more powerful angel. And I think it's hit us all hard. Mm-hmm. He was 43 years old, mm-hmm. recently married. Mm-hmm. Um, he was a superhero. Yeah. And uh, you know, it's tough to see him go that young. Mm-hmm. And to think that in 2016, he was diagnosed with this and was in four movies just that year. Yeah. Um, you know, and that... He did all of this filming and and everything while having surgeries, while having chemotherapy, keeping this obviously under wraps and still being able to perform. And and that's the thing. Like, he didn't go public with it. Right. He didn't, wasn't looking for an outpouring Mm -mm. of sympathy. No. he did what he loved to do, mm-hmm. and he just wanted to do that for as long as he could. Yeah, and, you know, and, and there have been, you know, different things that have come out where it's like, oh, if you look back now, you know, maybe he hinted at things or, you know, in different interviews. And there was one I, w- I was telling you about where it was a Black Panther uh, premiere uh, interview where they had the whole cast sitting there and he talked about how he was getting letters, you know, from children who were in children's hospitals who were fighting cancer and were just so happy to hear that the movie was coming out and that how heartbreaking it was because most of these children and two in particular passed away before the movie even came out. Yeah. So, Knowing that he was already going through all of this, I'm sure, added to, you know, to this as well. And, and hopefully, you know, pushed him to, to continue, you know, to, to bring this to, yeah. to everybody. 
Unfortunate. Mm-hmm. Very unfortunate. So that was all we had today. Um, I would invite everyone to uh, check out our long form articles on Medium mm-hmm. at medium.com slash insights into things. Obviously, subscribe to the podcast. We very much appreciate that. You'll get notifications every Monday when they come out live. Uh, well, they don't come out live, but. Live. They come out on Mondays. <laughs> They're published on Mondays. Right. Uh, again, uh, please email us your comments and suggestions at comments at insights into things dot com. You can find us on Twitter at insights underscore things. We stream on Twitch at twitch tv slash insights into things. You can find us on Facebook at facebook dot com uh, slash insights into things podcast. You can get the audio versions at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com. You can find all of our videos for all three of our podcasts, Insights into Teens, Insights into Tomorrow, and Insights into Entertainment on YouTube at youtube.com backslash, in backslash blah, 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 insights into things. And conveniently enough, you can get links to all of those and all of our social media links at www.insightsintothings.com. And that's it. Another one in the books. Have a good week, everyone. Bye. Thank you.